In the early 1930s, doom descended upon the fertile lands of Soviet Ukraine, a deadly famine that would haunt the nation for generations to come. This famine was called the Holodomor, also known as the Great Ukrainian Famine, which unfolded from 1932 to 1933, leaving millions of Ukrainians dead. But what exactly was the Holodomor? Was it a sinister genocide orchestrated by Joseph Stalin to crush a burgeoning Ukrainian independence movement? Or was it merely a tragic consequence of the Soviet Union's relentless drive towards industrialization and collectivization of agriculture? Join us on a journey into the heart of this dark famine, where the lines between truth and denial blur, and the ghosts of the past still cry out for justice. This story of the genocidal nightmare is the story called the Holodomor, which shook the world and forever changed the destiny of its nation. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. The Great Famine The Holodomor, also known as the Great Famine, was derived from two Ukrainian words, holod, which means hunger or starvation, and mor, which means plague. It was a human-engineered famine in the Soviet Ukraine from 1932 to 1933, considered one of the most devastating famines in history, resulting in the deaths of an estimated 2.4 to 20 million Ukrainians, speculated to have been caused by a combination of factors, including forced collectivization of agriculture, grain requisition policies by the Soviet government, and a harsh crackdown on Ukrainian resistance to collectivization. However, the truth is far more chilling and horrifying than numbers convey. pre Holodomor. The story of the Holodomor originated in the early 18th century when the Austrian and the Russian empires divided Ukrainian territories. At the time, Ukraine's dream of independence saw a glimmer of hope after World War I and the fall of the Russian monarchy in 1917. In 1918, Ukraine declared itself the Ukrainian People's Republic, fighting for its freedom against the Bolshevik Red Army. However, by 1922, Ukraine joined the Soviet Union, becoming the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. Before 1922, there was a brief period of hope with the new economic policy, NEP, introduced in 1921. As the NEP allowed for more economic freedom and private enterprise, nurturing independent farms and small businesses. At the time, Ukraine's cultural autonomy thrived. Still, this progress did not sit well with the General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, who held this political office from 1922 to 1952. Feeling threatened by Ukraine's vibrant cultural identity, which posed a perceived threat to him and the Soviet Union's centralized control, Stalin implemented a series of devastating measures to suppress any aspirations of Ukrainian independence by the people. And to thwart what he called the Ukrainian National Counter-Revolution, Stalin unleashed a wave of mass-scale political repression. This campaign involved widespread intimidation, arrests, and imprisonment. The Soviet regime tragically executed thousands of Ukrainian intellectuals, church leaders, and even members of the Ukrainian Communist Party who would align themselves with pro-Ukrainian policies. Simultaneously, Stalin rolled out the first five-year plan, which included a pivotal shift, the collectivization of agriculture, effectively ending the new economic policy, which had allowed for some economic freedoms and private enterprise. 
Collectivization granted the Soviet state direct control over Ukraine's abundant agricultural resources, enabling it to manage the grain supply for export. This grain would become instrumental in funding the USSR's transformation into an industrial powerhouse. However, most of Ukraine's rural population, primarily composed of independent small-scale or subsistent farmers, fiercely resisted collectivization, which compelled them to relinquish their land, livestock, and farming tools, but also conscripted them to work on government collective farms known as kolholes. Thus, the early 1930s witnessed around 4,000 local rebellions against collectivization, fueled by the burdens of taxation, terror, and violence imposed by Soviet authorities. However, these protests were met with brutal suppression by the Soviet secret police and the Red Army, leading to the arrest, execution, or deportation to labor camps of tens of thousands of farmers. Before the famine, the Soviet Union experienced a lone grain yield due to damp weather and low traction power, with official statistics erroneously reporting a higher profit. However, experts suggested that drought and wet weather caused poor harvest, and the extension of sown areas exacerbated the problem by intensifying endemic plant rust. Meanwhile, wealthy and successful farmers who opposed collectivization were labeled kulaks in Soviet propaganda, a derogatory term meaning a fist. They were singled out as enemies of the state and systematically targeted for elimination. The elimination of the so-called kulaks served three purposes. Firstly, it served as a chilling warning to those who opposed collectivization. Secondly, it facilitated the transfer of confiscated land to the collective farms. Thirdly, it functioned as a strategy to disband village leadership. Consequently, the secret police and the militia mercilessly stripped the kulaks of their land, homes, and personal possessions, forcibly relocating them to remote regions of the USSR. At the same time, authorities in their homelands shot those who dared to flee areas plagued by famine on sight, enforcing a brutal order. However, the impact of collectivization extended well beyond land acquisition from farmers, as it actively targeted cultural and religious institutions, resulting in the closure of numerous churches, the destruction of religious icons through fire, and the arrest of priests. According to records, by early 1930, 75% of autocephalous parishes in Ukraine faced persecution by Soviet authorities. However, in December 1930, churches were later allowed to reorganize under the leadership of Ivan Pavlovsky, who adhered to a pro-Soviet cosmopolitan ideology. In addition to the collectivization policy, the government institutionalized several other guidelines to fund its industrialization efforts, including the coercion of Ukrainian farmers to surrender their grain and other food crops, resulting in a food shortage for the local population. Ultimately, these sweeping repressive measures, combined with state-controlled grain purchases, natural factors like drought and bad weather, and dismantling of Ukrainian rural community life through collectivization, set the stage for a devastating tragedy, a genocide by hunger, known as the Holodomor. The Holodomor. At the heart of the Holodomor was the decree about the protection of socialist property, known as the Law of Spikelet. This law, enacted to safeguard the property of collective farms, gained its grim nickname because it criminalized the gathering of leftover grain from fields. Shockingly, this seemingly innocuous act resulted in the sentencing of over 200,000 individuals. As if that weren't enough, in November 1932, the Soviet government introduced a blacklist system. This system harshly penalized collective farms and villages 
that failed to meet grain quotas. Dire consequences ensued as they called in monetary loans and grain advances, confiscated food supplies, made arrests, and imposed trade restrictions. No one was spared from this relentless punishment as it affected people from all walks of life, including teachers, tradespeople, and even children. To further tighten its grip on the population, the Soviet government rolled out a passport system in December 1932. This system, ostensibly designed to control the movement of peasants seeking to escape from the famine, led to administrative penalties and even internment in labor camps for those lacking proper documents. Authorities sealed borders and enforced travel restrictions, leading to an estimated 150,000 excess deaths as desperate individuals became trapped in their homeland. But that's not all. The Holodomor also witnessed the widespread purge of Communist Party officials in Ukraine. This purge, characterized by thousands of arrests, executions, and internments, further intensified the suffering of the Ukrainian people. Shockingly, despite the severe crisis, the Soviet government refused foreign aid and consistently denied the very existence of the famine, paying no heed to the suffering of its citizens. The consequences of these policies were profound, affecting Ukraine socially economically and politically. Certain areas of Ukraine saw depopulation, and when Russians subsequently resettled them, a power struggle and geographical conflict between returning Ukrainians and Russian settlers ensued. As the famine raged, the death toll mounted, with estimates ranging from 7.5 to 20 million lives lost. In a speech delivered to the United States Congress in 2000, then President of Ukraine, Viktor Yushchenko, declared that the Holodomor had claimed the lives of 20 million Ukrainians. However, this figure remains a subject of debate among historians. Nevertheless, surviving the Holodomor was a harrowing struggle, demanding physical and moral endurance. In dire circumstances, people found themselves compelled to make unimaginable decisions as cannibalism emerged as a gruesome method of staying alive, with official records revealing that at least 2,505 individuals faced sentencing for this horrifying act during the Holodomor. Amidst this nightmarish struggle, some resorted to the unthinkable act of killing their children for sustenance or consuming the corpses of the deceased. The Aftermath the Holodomor was an immense tragedy, extending beyond Ukraine's boundaries and profoundly impacting countless individual lives. In a memoir by Mikhail Gorbachev, a mixed Russian-Ukrainian who experienced the famine as a child in Stavropol Krai, Russia, he vividly recollected the horrors of that time, revealing that in the dreadful year of famine, Nearly half of the population in his native village of Privonoya perished from starvation, a toll that included two of his father's sisters and one brother. However, in the aftermath of the Holodomor, Joseph Stalin and the Soviet authorities embarked on a sinister campaign to conceal the true extent of the famine's devastation. They went to great lengths, even orchestrating elaborate ruses to deceive the international community. They hosted influential Western figures like George Bernard Shaw and Edouard Herriot in meticulously staging Poticum villages, artfully shielding them from the stark reality of hunger and death. Despite these efforts to shroud the truth, Information about the catastrophe eventually found its way to the world beyond the Soviet borders, thanks to the courageous work of journalists such as Gareth Jones, Malcolm Mudridge, and others, alongside powerful photographs captured by engineer Alexander Wienerberger. Yet, the exact toll of this tragedy remains elusive due to the Soviet regime's relentless denial of its existence. 
Estimations regarding the number of casualties exhibit substantial disparities spanning from 2.5 million to a staggering 10 million fatalities. However, this estimate encompasses those who met their demise in the harsh conditions of the Gulag labor camps and those who succumbed within their homes within the Soviet republics by the end of 1933. Ultimately, the shadow of the tragic event of the Holodomor looms large over Ukrainian history, leaving an indelible imprint on its collective consciousness. Even in the modern era, the memory of the Holomodor genocide remains deeply embedded in the soul of Ukraine. So, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below, and remember to hit that subscribe button. To watch more insane and unique stories, click on the video options on the screen. You won't regret it.